Welcome to the Rehearing Beethoven Concert Series at the Library of Congress. My name is Stephanie Akau, and I'm an archivist here in the Music Division. Today, I've prepared some thoughts about one of the treasures in our special collections, the second movement presto from Ludwig von Beethoven's String Quartet in B-flat major, number 13, opus 130. The presto of the String Quartet number 13 is part of the Gertrude Clark Woodall Foundation Collection. Those of you who have been to our concert series at the library likely recognize Mrs. Woodall's name because she was one of the major philanthropists of the division. In 1938, she donated the funds to build the Woodall Pavilion that also houses the five Stradivarius string instruments she gifted in 1935, including the cello that you see on the screen. The music division hosts our pre-concert talks in the Woodall Pavilion and the Library of Congress holds numerous events there during the year. The second movement of the Opus 130 String Quartet is one of the holographs Mrs. Woodall purchased for the music division from the collection of Jerome Stonborough, an American industrialist who married into a powerful Austro-Hungarian family. Stonborough and his wife's family were also art collectors. The term holograph means that the manuscript or a handwritten piece of music is in the hand of the creator. In addition to the presto of the Opus 130 String Quartet, the Woodall Foundation Collection contains holographs by many composers considered to be titans of Western musical composition, including Brahms, Mendelssohn, Mozart, and Schoenberg. Beethoven wrote the Opus 130 String Quartet in 1825, only two years before he passed away in 1827. At this point in his life, Beethoven was ill and his relationship with his nephew Carl, to whom this letter is addressed, was strained to the breaking point. In spite of the emotional and physical challenges in his personal life, Beethoven was still able to remain productive. The Opus 130 is one of the three string quartets he composed as a commission from Prince Nicholas Galitzin, an amateur musician and fan who lived in Vienna, and the three quartets are dedicated to him. The other two are the string quartet number 12 in E flat major, Opus 127, and the string quartet number 15 in A minor, Opus 132. Of the three, Beethoven composed the Opus 130 last, even though its opus number places it in the middle. This is a complete holograph of the second movement of a six movement quartet, an unusual form for a string quartet even today. Composer and scholar Jan Swafford describes this movement in his book, Beethoven, Anguish and Triumph as, quote, compact to the point of intentional absurdity, end quote, as it contrasts both in its quick tempo and scherzo character with the preceding and following movements, and despite its numerous repeat signs, is a mere two and a half minutes long. The movement follows an A, B, A structure with the A sections in cut time in B flat minor and the middle B section in six four, in the much sunnier home key of B flat major and the style of dances that were popular at the time. Holographs are particularly fascinating because they give us insight into the compositional process that, of course, isn't visible once a piece is published. It's interesting to note that throughout the movement, the changes Beethoven made to the manuscript are largely harmonic, which suggests that he already had the rhythms and roles of each instrument worked out in previous drafts, but he was still working out the progression of the harmony. So this particular manuscript is close to, if not the final version that went to the copyist. However, as expected from a musical work in its genesis, there are a number of places where Beethoven made corrections to the piece. At the top of the third page, where Beethoven changes the 8VA marking to loco or play as written, it appears that he wrote over the notes in the first violin part as they ascend to a resolution on a B flat high above the staff with a broader quill, hence the darker ink. For clarity, he wrote the names of the notes above them, perhaps as a courtesy to the copyist, and a safeguard against mistakes. When the same music returns on page six, he instead uses the marking 8VA, which tells the performer to play the notes an octave higher than they're written, since the notes are easier to read when they're written an octave lower. There is an additional annotation to the copyist on page seven. When the A section returns to conclude the piece, so does the key of B flat minor, which has five flats. There is no room between the measures with the first violin's final chromatic descent and the return of the A section in cut time for five flats. Instead, Beethoven writes each instrument's key signature on the extra staff below the cello part in score order with what I believe are the words violin, violin, viola, and a small bass clef to indicate the cello. 
One of Beethoven's edits that did not make it into later published versions is the tempo change indication at the top of page seven. Beethoven originally marked listisso tempo, which means the same tempo as before, and tells the performers to return to the original tempo of the section after the ritardando on page six. But as you can see, he crossed it out and wrote presto above it in pencil. Now presto is the tempo marking from the beginning of the piece, which is in a different time signature. It's important to realize that the overall tempo and beat of the music movement doesn't actually change, even though the time signatures do. In the A sections, the beat is divided and felt in two, one and two and one and two and, while the, in the B section, the beat is subdivided in three while the tempo stays the same. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All this to say that the use of either tempo marking communicates the same thing and it was up to either Beethoven or the publisher to ultimately decide which marking offers the most clarity to the performers. Again, since this holograph is nearly finished, the only full measures Beethoven removed are the last two on the first fourth page, which are X'd out and labeled vague or away. These two measures do not differ in their rhythm or melody from any others in the middle dance B section of the movement. Instead, they extend the brief but implied tonal center of D minor for an additional two bars. Had Beethoven left these two measures in, they would have disrupted the four bar phrase structure he utilizes not just in this middle B section, but throughout the whole movement. If you look closely, you can see that he originally marked out the two measures before these as well, but later decided against it, and they are included here and in the published versions. Had he decided to leave these two measures out as well, it would have shortened the D minor tonal center even further. I believe Beethoven was trying to integrate harmonic variance and contrast into this short movement while also trying to work out the transition back to B flat minor, the key in which the movement started, and the return of the musical material from the A section. The short tonal center of D minor is the only time in the B section when the music is not in a major key. Although extremely brief, this is also the only time in the B section when Beethoven utilized an immediate pianissimo or very soft dynamic marking, drawing listeners in by using harmonic and dynamic contrast as he prepares to transition back to the A section. Aside from the music, there are additional materials laid in, including a letter from Beethoven to a man named Karl Holtz. Holtz was the second violinist in the Schuppanzig String Quartet. They premiered the first of the Galitzin Quartets, Opus 127, in March of 1825. Holtz was a minor politician who also worked as Beethoven's secretary in an unofficial capacity from 1825 to 1826. On the following page, Holtz transcribed Beethoven's letter and provided an explanation of its contents. The last page is a typescript letter written by Dr. Eusebius Mandashevsky in 1921. Mandashevsky was a professor at the Staats Academy for Music in Vienna. In this assessment, he describes the manuscript and verifies its authenticity. Mandashevsky was also a conductor, musicologist, and a close friend of Johannes Brahms. He edited and wrote about a number of Brahms' works, and his assessments accompany other holographs in the music division's collections, including Brahms' Piano Concerto No. 1 in D minor, and this one for Brahms' Gigs for Piano. Beethoven completed the B-flat major string quartet in 1825, and it was premiered in March of 1826 by the Schuppanzig String Quartet. This movement, along with the fourth, were reported to receive so much applause that the quartet had to play them twice. Prince Galitzin wrote to Beethoven numerous times in 1825 asking for the final manuscript, but after completing the quartet, Beethoven was forced to write to Galitzin several times asking for the remainder of his payment for completing his commission. Sadly, Galitzin did not pay the full commission to Beethoven's heirs until 25 years after Beethoven's death. For unlike Prince Galitzin, you do not have to wait to see this holograph. It is available to view online as part of the Gertrude Whittall Foundation and the Library of Congress Treasures Digital Collections. Thank you for watching and joining us as we explore Beethoven's music in new ways during the Rehearing Beethoven Festival at the Library of Congress.